A man in my department, now he worked the night shift, so it was before the day shift, which I worked day shift. He had died on the job. Apparently he had an, um, a stroke and died inside the trailer. From my understanding, he was inside the trailer for probably 20 minutes before someone realized they hadn't seen him and went in the trailer and found him on the floor dead. He had gone to HR and said, I'm not feeling so well. Can I please go home? Because, you know, a lot of folks, even myself, we don't even have enough UPT, which is unpaid time off, right? And if you go negative, they'll get rid of you like that. And so a lot of people are terrified of that. And this dude, he didn't have enough to go home. And so what HR told him was, you're just gonna have to speak to management and see what they can do. And just, you know, go back to your station and figure things out. I guess he spoke to his manager and his manager told him the same, the same message that you just don't have enough UPT. And so they're effectively telling him, it's either you go home and lose your job or you just stay here and keep working through the pain. And that's what he did. He was not supposed to be in a trailer by himself. They always supposed to be someone in the trailer or at the end of the trailer to keep an eye on you, just in case something falls on you. And he was in there by himself. So that we all know was uh, wrong. On the day that this man had passed, his ship died, there was another person who had to be uh, put in an ambulance. They brought a wheelchair wheeled him to the front where fire truck and ambulance was waiting for him and they took him to the hospital uh, and he passed. So that was two people passed away in less than uh, six hours. They actually come around and tell people not to talk about it and to go, go back to work. A coworker of mine, he went up to this one manager and asked him like, what happened with the man who had passed away. Management told him straight to his face, I don't know what you're talking about. That's the most disrespectful thing on the planet. Like, why would you, why would you say something like that? There's no shutdown. There's no moment of silence. There's no time to sit and, um, and have a prayer. A couple of people that worked directly with him or knew him good uh, was badly shaken up. Uh, a couple of them wanted to go home and were not allowed to go home. like we, we really got to do something and Perry was like I'm gonna call OSHA and I'm like I'm gonna call him too and I wanted to get some clarifications on why OSHA's never been in inside the facility to check out any of these deaths I said so the two deaths that happened today and he said wait a minute he said what you mean two deaths and I said two people died he said well we we had we were notified about the man had a stroke in a trailer I said yes I said, but another man was wheeled out at 6 a.m. and he later died at the hospital. And he said they didn't report that. I think it was a week after that OSHA showed up. That at least got them out there to look around, but they didn't talk to any uh, employees as far as I know, which uh, I think they should have. This has been the sixth person that has died at Amazon. And something has to be done. Like, this is insane. How long are we gonna wait until somebody else dies? If they would have just let him go home, he would, he would be spending Christmas with his family right now. This is a human being, that's somebody's dad, somebody's husband, somebody's grandfather or uncle. And Amazon just viewed him as just a means for them to make more money. What happens if, if I drop? You know, what are they going to do? They're going to slap me out of the way, put somebody in my spot, and I'm, not, I'm just going to be a, a body, another body? The management at Amazon is just built a certain way to ensure that we are always productive. And so that's why they disassociate their own feelings and they seem like they're, they're mechanical and they're always like, you gotta do your job. I don't care if you're in pain. I don't care if you don't have any UPT or PTO. You gotta keep doing your job.
Bessemer is a low income, you know, and mainly black city. You know, it's a very small town and it feels like they put that there because they can take advantage of desperate people. People are looking for a job. People are looking for something that would provide them with at least temporary stability. They sat it right there because they're like, look, we can get all these people to come work here. We got 6,000 employees to get these packages out. That's good for us because that means more money in our pockets. You a body. You know, once that body's used up, they'll just bring somebody else in and do the work. <laughs>